Hello there, and welcome to this room, and welcome to me. My name is Anthony, and if you would give me a brief moment of your time, I would like to tell you a true ghost story. It's the story of naval war hero Stephen Decatur and his house. His house is now a museum in Washington, D.C. of African American history and culture. And I warn you, if you ever decide to visit that museum, you might want to bring a bottle of Pepto-Bismol. Many guests who have visited there report feeling intense stomach pains. Right about here, actually. Sometimes, it, sometimes it's as mild as just some cramping. Other times it's so severe that people lose their balance and have to hold on to furniture or have to rush into the restroom and vomit their guts out. Some guests get so ill they have to go to the doctor. And doctors are often stumped, ruling out a virus, ruling out food poisoning. They don't know what's going on. But people still come there, sometimes anticipating or hoping to have that sickness. What's causing it? Well, if you believe in that kind of thing, many people attribute it to the ghost of the home's owner, Stephen Decatur. Stephen Decatur was a naval war hero who was shot and killed in a duel. He was taken to his house where he bled out and died, screaming in pain, his blood soaking the sheets. He was killed by Commodore James Barron. James Barron was the uh, captain of the USS Chesapeake, and the Chesapeake was taken at sea by the HMS Leopard. The Leopard was a British ship and they were after British deserters. And there were three deserters on the Chesapeake. Barron surrendered without a fight. He raised the white flag, didn't put up any resistance. He went out like a coward. He surrendered the Chesapeake and the British captured their deserters, executed one on the spot, and the other two were sentenced and executed later. Needless to say, it was a humiliating defeat for the young United States of America. And Barron was harshly punished, but not harshly enough. His sentence was only five years stripped of his, uh, stripped of his command. But one of the members of the jury who convicted him in his court-martial was none other than Stephen Decatur. And Commodore Barron was a petty man. And after five years of stewing in his own bitterness, he tracked down one of the members of his jury, Decatur, and challenged him to a duel, which in those days was how you settled your disagreements. And fate is not fair, because clearly Baron was in the wrong, clearly Decatur was in the right. But it was Decatur who lost the duel. He was shot about right here, and uh, taken to his house where he writhed and screamed in pain as he lay on his bed, soaking the sheets with his blood. The sheets had to be changed constantly. And at one point, he screamed, I did not know it was possible for any man to suffer this much pain. He died two days after being shot, and his wife was in hysterics. She screamed and ran about the house in fits of despair, and she had to be sedated to keep her calm and to make her stop. And ever since then, guests to his house have reported feeling stomach pain in the same spot where Decatur was shot. And many can see his, his face peering out of the window, anticipating the arrival of his challenger. They've even had to wall up that window because so many people saw his face. And some guests still report seeing Decatur leave out the back door of his house, pistols in hand. It's as if he has to continually go out and do the duel all over again and then attempt to make things right and to win. Maybe one day he will. But for the time being, Decatur remains trapped in an infinite loop of going out pistol in his hand to face his murderer again and again and again. Thank you for your time.